Nubia Z17. And I feel like with this phone, Nubia have done really well with the design. It's quite slim, but also a little bit heavy. And that's mainly due to its metal build. And also because of that aluminium build, it feels very solid and well made. It also gives it a cold feeling in the hands when you first pick it up. A nice looking 5.5 inch bezel screen adorns the front. Here there's no physical home button, instead we have this glowing red circle. On either side of that there is the back function and the task manager, which appears to barely visible red dots when touched. On both the corners and edges, they haven't gone with the much more rounded and curved appeal of say the Samsung Galaxy series, and even compared to recent big name smartphones such as the Xiaomi Mi 6, the overall look of the Nubia is much more rectangular. The texture on the back of the phone looks great, with a matte black finish which I found did not easily attract fingerprints and other marks. Also on the back we have the brand name Nubia, and in the upper centre a circular fingerprint scanner with a small shiny bezel around it. Overall it fits in very well with the design of the phone. Another thing I like is that they've kept the lettering of the company name at the bottom very small, whereas the red outline surrounding the dual rear cameras makes them stand out in an eye-pleasing way. Noticeably missing from this phone is an audio jack, so Nubia have provided a USB-C to 3.5mm socket converter. Also in the box you get the typical array of manuals, a charger and a nice looking red USB cable with a rubber tie fixed on. In terms of foam colour, there's a decent amount of choice here since you can choose between blue, red, black, gold or black with gold. The 1080p Full HD screen shows a good degree of colour contrast and sharpness. It's large enough to watch videos and play games on comfortably and here you can see the sort of quality you can expect from the Z17's display. Internally, you have the choice between a 6GB RAM, 64GB internal storage version or 8GB of RAM with 128GB of storage. Either way, there's plenty of storage for the typical user. This phone is running on a top of the range processor, the Snapdragon 835, and combined with a solid amount of RAM in whichever version you pick, it means that the Z17 will be running pretty much any application you can throw at it with relative ease. Not only that, but the split screen function on this phone allows you to interact with two applications on one screen at the same time. In addition to that, there's also the app clone feature pre-installed on the phone, which allows you to log into two separate accounts on one app from the same device. It's got dual SIM card capability and a decently sized 3200 mAh battery, which should keep you going with it for over a day on a full charge. As far as photo taking, there's a 16 megapixel front camera and a 12 megapixel and 23 megapixel camera on the back, sitting alongside a dual tone LED flash. The camera app offers a multitude of options for utilising these cameras, which is something I might explore in future videos. These photos are just a small example of the type of detail that can be captured using the Z17's rear cameras. At $400, it's certainly not a budget smartphone, but at that price it is still far cheaper than other better known flagship phones and Nubia really hasn't skimped out on the specifications with the Z17. I'd recommend it for someone who doesn't quite feel like splashing out on those other flagships but still wants a top of the range phone with a smart design. If you'd like to see another video about either the photos or the performance and gaming capability of the Nubia Z17 then hit me up in the comments section below. If you'd like to get a hold of this phone for yourself then simply follow the link in the description. Thanks for watching.